A trend I've been seeing is when a blog posts celebrity relationships and how they divorce or they separated. And I go in the comments and I see people saying things like nothing lasts forever or see this is why I don't want to get married. And why are we basing the success of our relationship off of somebody else? I'm here to tell you the truth. So stick around with your girl Ange and let's talk love. So you know I'm coming to you guys all late and wrong because if you don't know me, you know I have to take my time when talking about certain things and making like a long drawn out podcast about it to think about the situation and then you know some stuff comes up that makes me change my opinion on the matter or whatever the case may be. And so I... Tia, this podcast came about because Tia Mari Haldrick recently announced that she was divorcing her husband, Corey Hardrick, of 14 years. And it kind of sent people into a shock because they thought they were this happy couple. And while they may have been a happy couple, you know, sometimes stuff just happens. Uh, sometimes people just aren't meant to be together and they end up in a divorce or whatever the case may be. And I read a comment in the shade room. See, this is why you got to stay out of the shade room. I read a comment and I was taken aback and it read, see, this is why, uh, see, this is why I never want to get married and, you know, nothing lasts. And it followed up with a comment from another user saying, seems like nothing lasts. I'm sorry, that's what it said. And while I agree that these days it does seem like nothing lasts, I was taken aback as to why we are basing whether or not we get married off of somebody else and there is a reason why and a reason why people have this mindset why I don't want to get married and I have a theory about that the problem is we idolize social media relationships relationships uh, celebrity relationships relationships that have nothing to do with us and we focus on them and not creating the relationship that we want the relationship that we desire we need to stop basing success off what we see in other people because success is subjective so what is successful to you will not be successful to me you may equate money as success where i may not you may think that relationship success is one thing and i may think it is another we all have different viewpoints and the relationships we are idolizing or you are idolizing you may value one thing but it may not be something that you'll value in your relationship so what i'm saying is every person in every marriage is battling something you aren't going to see it because well for starters somebody's marital struggles isn't any of our business but they are there the battles are there you're just not seeing their battles you're just not at the forefront of those battles so all you're seeing is the idea of perfection right and what they go through you may not go through and what you go through they may not go through and by idolizing these celebrity relationships and basing how we move off of celebrity relationships or social media relationships or even our parents relationships we are stuffing ourselves inside a box with no way to expand how we perceive and can grow in our own relationships because we're all different i had posted a poll back on instagram a while back on love inspiry podcast if you don't follow me over there make sure you follow me over there i go on little one minute rants sometimes but <laughs> i had posted a poll on instagram and i was asking do you think this generation is capable of love like is do we make excuses or is it true and majority of the people said we make excuses this generation is a generation of excuse and i have to agree with that because this generation is very different in the sense of it idolizes illusion. And I want to explain something to you. Fantasy has become attractive to people. So I don't know if we can blame that on the Disney movies from back in the day, but I know it's a thing. Uh, fantasy is real and we love TV shows and movies because it takes us out of real life. It takes us out of the moment that we're in at this particular time. And I remember when COVID first started out and all the TV shows were coming back like Grey's Anatomy, Station 19, all those shows like on ABC and NBC and they were kind of incorporating COVID into the show. And I remember seeing comments of people saying like, I don't like this and you know, y'all shouldn't be doing this and I don't want to see COVID because I'm dealing with it in real life. 
directly remember seeing a comment like that. People were upset because they wanted to escape. This is an us problem. I think for some of us, it's easier to fantasize than to do the actual work, than to educate ourselves, than to do and be better individuals. But fantasy is hurting us in our relationship department severely, guys. Fantasy is forcing us to not evaluate what we see is right or the best way we're looking at society and having society tell us in social media relationships and celebrity relationships tell us oh this is the correct way fantasy is forcing us to focus on falsehoods stuff that's not real and we need to put more emphasis on what's happening in real life but most importantly what's happening in our real life so we have to start focusing on creating and building a marriage or a relationship because everybody doesn't want marriage and that's cool. Uh, whatever you're in, you need to create what you love. Every relationship is unique. You'll hear me say that time and time again. What works for you won't work for somebody else. So we have to keep that in mind. Of course, I feel like there are relationship qualities that all relationships should possess right we all should have trust we all should have honesty we all should have communication etc i think it's safe to say we all should not be getting we should not be getting abused in our relationships whether verbally or physically i think it's safe to say that some stuff is standard across the board of relationships you have to ask yourself though what relationship success looks like to you and not what you see on the internet, not what society is telling you. And that's the downfall of memes and some opinions, right? We see them and look at them and reconstruct our own personal opinion that we had based around what we saw and what we think we should be doing or what somebody is telling us that we should be doing. Oh, this meme said this. It sounds good in the moment and in the space that I am currently in, but it's not how I truly feel later on. And so sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not a good thing. But I want to back up and clarify what I mean by relationship success. What do you want the overall outcome of your relationship to be and how are you going to get there? I found the best way to create this is to have yourself a mission statement and identify three key words that you would want somebody to whether your kids or grandkids or anybody, three key words of what you want people to see when they see your relationship and or your marriage. And then once you identify that and you get those key words, then you can build around that. And so I know for me, I want people to see the love of God in my marriage. I want them to see true friendship and I want them to true, see true loyalty. Um, and how I get there is, well, first, with the relationship and the love of God, I have to read my Bible. I have to practice what I know and exemplify it. I can't just read it. I have to exemplify the love of God in my marriage. That means forgiveness. That means compassion. True friendship came from building a strong foundation, right? So we took our time in really expanding on the relationship. I think my husband took like six or eight months to ask me to be his girlfriend, something like that. But it was good. It was good for us. And uh, continuing to date one another in the loyalty, how we go about that is just total transparency. Carrying ourselves with dignity, even when the other person is not around. We do it by having reverence for one another. So the three key words and then how you're going to go about it will help you identify and create a relationship that you will love. What I'm getting at is the creation of that has nothing to do with anybody else and everything to do with you and what you desire from a relationship. What are the key words that you want your relationship to look like or your future relationship? Because you don't necessarily have to be in a relationship to do this. What do you want your future relationship to look like? The real question now is, how do we get to a place of where we don't idolize celebrity relationships, social media relationships, or any other relationships that have nothing to do with us? And I truly believe there is a misunderstanding on relationships as a whole and how to successfully be in one. That's my new focus going forward in 2023 and henceforth now and forever until I get a 
new sign from the Lord or whatever. It's just helping individuals understand the components of a powerful relationship so that they can grow gracefully together as one. You know, at one point, I think Tia later came back on an interview and said that she had graduated from her marriage. Those were her words. And I have a whole rant on Instagram about that. But I'll say again, marriage is not designed for you to graduate from. And so I have a framework that I want to share with you guys for creating a relationship that we desire. And in order to create a relationship we love, we need to understand this framework and the mistakes that we are making within that framework. So the first part of the framework is building a strong foundation. And the biggest mistake I see is people rushing their foundation, rushing their relationship. And when you rush anything, you are bound to fail. You are bound to make a mistake. You are going to make mistakes in the relationship anyway. Things are going to come up, small things, big things. They're going to come up. So why add more to it by rushing your foundation, rushing getting to know who you are with? And this step is also the mistake of not asking the right questions and focusing on all the wrong things. Yes, red flags are a real thing and they don't always mean it's going to be a bad relationship or that you should just go ahead and get out of the relationship because we all have red flags about us. It just means to be aware and watch the behavior. Watch it for right now while you're in that foundational period and you're just friends and kicking it. Watch those things. Heck, sometimes the green flags are the ones that we need to be steering away from because green flags can look like love bombing. First, love bombing comes off very, oh my goodness, this person really likes me. This person gets down with me. But then it turns into narcissism and control. So love bombing can look like, you know, being overly affectionate and attentive to somebody, making these romantic gestures when you just first start out with somebody. I think some of one of the R. Kelly girls talked about how she went through love bombing. So sometimes the green flags are the ones that we need to watch out for as opposed to the red flags. This step, honestly, you have to be very careful with because oftentimes this is the stage where we're on our best behavior. I talked about that in a previous podcast. So again, you have to study, you have to listen, you have to watch, you have to talk about important things. You can't put stuff on the back burner. You need to be trying to establish a friendship as opposed to getting into a relationship, right? There's a different relationship there. Establish that friendship first. That's part one of how you create a relationship that you love. You know, additionally, I want to say jumping into a relationship is the equivalent to making a hasty decision. So what comes out of that? Confusion, resentment, frustration, all the things that will break up your relationship. So take your time and build. Now, here's the thing about this. Is there a right time to go from your foundation period to a relationship? Each person in each relationship is different. You may have been with somebody for, uh, you know, longer than what you have seen a couple on social media or in, in your personal life. But you don't know that couple. You don't know how much time they're spending together, what they're doing when they're seeing each other, how they're building that a, a deeper connection or whatever the case may be. You know, you don't see all of that. So you can't say, oh, well, so-and-so got into this relationship in this amount of time. I need to be in one. Everybody's is unique. But if you stop idolizing them, if you stop focusing on them, you would be able to focus on you and making sure that you are seeing your partner. You see what I just did there? Focus on your own self. Focus on your own relationship. And of course, here's the thing, right? Somebody can say right now, like, well, you're not focused on your relationship. You're up in my business. I'm just here to help you guys. I'm here to throw some things out there for you to understand the bigger picture when it comes to relationship and the framework for creating a relationship that you love. The foundation, guys, is really, truly the beginning of your relationship success. So in stage two of the framework is development. So how are you interacting with your partner or your possible partner? Guys, we're talking about creating a relationship that we love so we can stop idolizing. 
patience, understanding, trust, communication. How are you growing together as a couple? And a mistake that I see couples make is that we're not addressing our partner based on how they move, but we're addressing them based on how we move, how we move. So in other words, what I'm saying is you are approaching your partner as you, as opposed to them. You're not meeting them on their level. And when you don't meet them and approach them on their level, you're approaching them, approaching them from like maybe your level or a past relationship. You're not going to get through to them. You're not going to be able to grow with them because you're not meeting them where they're at. And you can only do this by developing and growing together. You can only do this when you are fostering your relational skills. And the key to growing together is a question that I get asked a lot. And the key to growing together for me has always been to constantly communicate whether he communicates back or not. Like he's always going to know where I, where I stand on situations and to be the best of friends because friendship is so key on those days where you're like, mm, and you're in the mirror having to tell yourself he's a good man, Savannah, a good man. And you have to talk yourself off the ledge. Many people are in relationships with people they don't even like. I often say, if you can't hang out with your husband or your wife as a friend, you probably should not be married to them. If you can't see yourself, if something were to happen after divorce and it was nothing big that caused it, if you can't see yourself still being friends with them, you probably should not be in a relationship with them. Just honest. But like I was saying, some people are in relationships with people that they don't even like, that they're not even truly friends with. They're just there because they like the idea of them or because they are there for some other type of benefit, whatever the case may be. That's a podcast for another day coming soon. All right. And step three is maintaining. So here's the thing about maintaining the relationship, right? If LeBron James didn't maintain his body throughout his 20 years, he would not be LeBron James. He would just be another name. So you can't just build and then decide to fall off and think that things are going to be all hunky-dory and pan out for you when you're not maintaining what you have built. And this is where people mess up and they think that they could just coast once they get over that seven-year hump or whatever they say the hump is now. They think they could just coast through the relationship and not put in any work. And sure, Certain things as you grow together won't require you to try so hard. But effort is timeless. It's timeless. You still, regardless of how many years you've been married, you still have to put something in to get something out of it. It's, it's just, it's mandatory. You still have to level one another. People with successful businesses, they are successful because they continuously put into their business whether it's personal development whether it's putting the profits back into the business whatever the case may be what makes a happy home unhappy or a joyful home unjoyful is not loving when your spouse you forgetting to date each other ultimately you forgetting to maintain what you have built in that foundation and developmental stage. Now, of course, there are some things that happens in between that, and I'd be here all day talking about it. You know, I can't touch on everything. You would have to talk to me one-on-one to dig deeper into these, uh, this framework of, you know, what you should be discussing in the foundation, things of that sort, and just relational skills and development, which we're gonna be focusing more on this year, and then maintaining. I often say I can't teach effort. I just don't, I I can't do that. Everything else, I'm game, but I can't teach you and give you effort in your relationship. You have to want to be there. You have to have a desire to be there. You have to build for you, ladies and gentlemen. You must build for you and not for somebody else and not for what you see. I'm Angie Roll, the teen wife that turned my struggles into strength marital woes into wins and made the mistakes so you don't have to stick around with me next week as we talk about exactly what the heck is wrong with you